Estimated delivery for a single pizza. 70 minutes. That's a lie. Do you gotta forge it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not millionaire. It's a fucking pizza. Look, the pizza smith is on his lunch break. That shit. <laughs> I... Man, the fucking day I had it, we're like, every other place is closed. The only two places that deliver are fucking Domino's and Papa John's. I woke up and the bank died. <laughs> and I open up my fridge and there's literally nothing in my fridge. I could go ahead and, like, make just rice and maybe just add, like, some sesame seeds to it for some crunch. <laughs> Bear pantry surprise casserole. <laughs> the secret ingredient is rice. <laughs> I'm three. I'm 37. I'm 37 and an art. I'm 37 and I do like voice work and like art and just like writing. What does that mean? Well, as you can see with my pantry, it's going well in some ways. <laughs> I remember I talked to one of to somebody and I was like, what do you do? And like, I can't say like, oh, I'm an online retainer because I've worded what I do for my job 9,000 different ways. And it's always boiled down to people going, Oh, do you whip your dick out for the fucking internet? And I go, No, why is that the first thing everybody comes up with? <laughs> why is that like the first thing? So like, I'm an online entertainer and they're like, What's that? And I go, It's kind of like being, um, it's kind of like being a, uh, uh, it, 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 it's kind of like being a, a radio DJ from like back in the day. Like, Oh, okay. And so one person thought, like, I made so much money, I drove a Lamborghini. I'm not even lying. And I was like, you're an idiot. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, no, no, I do not. Because, like, I, I don't understand it. Because people, like, the only things that I could be, like, is I'm like, oh, you have as much money as Markiplier. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh, Oh, are you between jobs or something? No, I've been doing it for five years. <laughs> Zinnikiv, thank you for subscribing for 17 months, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> what that ended up boiling down to is me just going, uh, I work out of a home, and then just people are fine with that. So that's just been my go-to answer. But it's just weird that with my profession, people are just like, oh, you could buy a manor? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I can't even buy manor brand cereal. <laughs> anyway, Spaz is customizing. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Monster Roaster. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Ravid, this is Spaz. We're going to go ahead and smooch monsters in one of the best ways possible. Hopefully. It's, uh... This, this game is an entirely different beast from the others. It's not a dating game, it is a survival game with dating sub-mechanics. Oh, fantastic. Let's do that. Prank master mode. Add some cutthroat mechanics to decide who's the MVP. Beautiful glitch declines responsibility for broken friendships. <laughs> ah, the road. That mythical beast of asphalt. We once tamed it in what became one of the strangest, most wonderful journeys of our lives. Back then, when we were young and unafraid, Summer was coming to an end when Polly and Scott planned a road trip. The whole thing was bound to go off rails. This was the prank masters, after all. Scott Howell, 21, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. <laughs> and Polly Geist, 22, 
a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Each of them were, by themselves, an agent of chaos. But together, together they were the perfect combo for hijinks to ensue. Who in their right mind would have agreed to join them on such a trip? Okay, we got. I got the, uh, the DLC, so aside from the color crew, we also have Juan, the small magical Latino cat who is buff as fuck now. <laughs> That's what's up. Glitch. Zoe and Hazel. <laughs> Mop man. <laughs> Moth SP. <laughs> uh, let's see. I will be uh, I will be Jack Cat person. Jack Cat wizard. All right. Uh, I think you can because of the remote play. You can control shit if you need to. Let me see. So see if you can mouse or arrow around. If not, oh, okay. Uh, who who'd you say then? Buff cat. Buff. All right. Uh, name. Chicle. We got Chicle. <laughs> All right. The cat with the. <laughs> and I'll audio be my boy Brian. Audio and stuff. Yeah, audio and stuff may stutter. Sure. You know what this is. <laughs> yep. Lo-fi beats. Oh, that's jazzy. <laughs> All right. Was the road trip a dangerous idea? Yes. Was it poorly planned? Yes. <laughs> Did we do it anyway? Fuck yes. <laughs> yeah, that was me in college. <laughs> For in the end, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Okay. All right, choose a dare. <laughs> okay. Acquire a trinket that gives you stamina. Sure. That sounds fun. Okay. Mm. Yeah. You ever seen a cat drive? No. Okay, so. <laughs> we're doing this uh, Mario Party style. We're all in, we're all in the same car. We have a pool of resources that we share. Mm -hmm. We have to get one of them high enough to get an ending. If any of them get to zero, we game over. Sounds cool to me. Every, All right. every turn, you get to pick between two destinations to go to. You want to go to the farm or the picnic spot. I want to see the animals. I love animals. I want to see a farm. cow. I want to pet a cow. It ain't much, but it's honest work. All right, and uh, the way these little symbols here work, uh, question mark is, you know, just everything's a mystery. Uh, if they show, like, uh, this one is, you know, plus soul, that means whatever decision we make will gain soul. Uh, what we lose is determined based on the different choices. Uh, same here, it's like, no matter what, if, if you pick the second event, you gain stamina, you, you lose something else. You just you joined and thought the game had a legit narrator. Oh yeah, Spaz has an amazing voice. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why he doesn't believe me. Oh stop! I'm just doing my best Octo Pimp impression. <laughs> and one day I will go ahead and eat his heart. Ah, <laughs> uh, farm life. Sometimes it's nice to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city. Farmers enjoy clean air, homegrown food, and simple living. Want some juice? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at him. Look at him. <laughs> look at my little baby. Sure, it comes at the price of doing lots of hard labor and usually only having livestock for company. But fuck it. Today, you're all about that cottage core life. What part of the farm do you want to see first? Cows! <laughs> you and your friends wander the farm for a little bit when you run into its owner. Oh, hello, I'm Jacqueline. Are you strangers here to help and support me while I restore my grandfather's farm? <laughs> oh. Nah, we're more like trespassers. We just want to pet some of your cute farm animals. 
Oh, that's fine too. But I have to warn you, my animals have been acting weird lately. <laughs> Things are going great when I raise cows and sheep, but when I brought my pigs. Well, you can see for yourselves. I need to plant at least 45 seeds this afternoon to optimize crop production, but I'll meet you at the barn soon. You check out the barn. The animals have gathered into a circle around one pig standing on a milk crate and giving a speech. <laughs> Rise up, comrades, says the pig. We've long toiled under monster kind, doing their bidding for no reward. We must overthrow Jacqueline and take over the farm ourselves. I love your ideas, Snowflake, says a cow. What sort of reform do you plan to establish once you're the farm overlord? Well, when I'm ruler, we'll build a huge walled-in enclosure to imprison the monsters, and then we'll make the monsters pay for it. It'll be awesome. <laughs> I'm back. Anyway, do you see what I mean? The, anim the animals have gone postal. I don't think I'm a tyrannical farm dictator like I overheard them say. I also don't mind establishing a fair union between me and my animals if that's what they want. But I'm pretty sure Snowflake just wants to establish himself as a cruel dictator who's taking advantage of the animals' limited intelligence to do so. Oh! <laughs> you wanna be Scott? <laughs> Fuck yeah, I wanna be Scott! <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? Snowflake sounds like a great leader. He's going to make the monsters pay for the wall. I've got an idea. Let's introduce a rogue element into Snowflake's regime. The animals won't listen to us monsters, but they might believe one of their own. That could work. I met tons of weird animals since I moved here. Let's ask one of these two. This is your life now. <laughs> well, I need the brand. Let's send in the very normal rabbit who really needs a convincing backstory to go undercover. <laughs> oh, that guy is a choice. Where did you even meet this rabbit, Jacqueline? Well, Furcon came through the valley one time, and yeah, the rest speaks for itself. Nice to oh, I'm sorry. You should obviously be the rabbit. <laughs> it's nice to meet you all. My name is Lester, but I prefer to go by Rabbit's Crimson Soul. I'll do everything in my power to take the pig, pig down. We just need to put our minus two mind to it and devise Rabbit's amazing backstory. Let's tell the animals I'm a lost prince from the toppled Crimson Soul Kingdom. You're to warn them of the dangers of falling corrupt leaders like my own father was. It sounds a little convoluted, but I think the animals will believe it. Go for it. Great! Also, Rabbix can shoot crimson flames from his palms and turn a touch of voluptuous bunnies of breaths. Can I tell him that, too? Oh. Don't push it. <laughs> for some reason, you send Rabbix in. It's going well for the first two minutes until he tries to do a cartwheel and his head falls off. He's not a real rabbit, cries Snowflake. He's an imposter sent here to overthrow me. Bessie! Trample the outsider! But why? Asks Bessie the cow. He's harmless, and obviously a big fan of animal culture. I'm intrigued by his idea of having a fursona. I confess I've always had a skin sona. I like to pretend I'm a banshee who's a lawyer by day and a secret ninja at night. Oh, Bessie! If you want, I can sew you a banshee costume to wear while I'm milking you in the mornings. Um, can, can we all be part of this? Snowflake asks. Like, can my skin someone be a fallen angel called Emperor Snowflake, who everybody fears yet secretly wants to be? Fine, as long as these fantasies are stri strictly hypothetical. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> the power of roleplay solved everything. The animals get to live their skin sewn dreams, and you gain plus two soul for thwarting an Orwellian plot. <laughs> Row the bard, this... This is two references on one. Welcome to Monster Prom, man. So sleepy. Let's see. The Dynast. <laughs> or regular gas Alex station. Uh, let's see. Well, we've already Alpha got... Rabbit, uh, thank you very much for the 100 bits. This shit is nightmare fuel. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, gals! 
The Dynast is a classy locale made for the road tripper with discerning tastes. Um... <laughs> Sadly, it looks like everyone and their mother is a road tripper with discerning tastes. This place is packed. The only way you're going to get seated anytime soon is if you sit with someone else. This is a great opportunity to smash conventional manners and make new friends. Who do you sit with? A couple who looks like they need couples therapy from you, maybe? He who clearly doesn't want to be bothered. Poor soul waiting for their blind date. <laughs> you all sit down with a nervous lich. Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, bro. I'm Scott. Is this he taken? Huh? Um, hi, hi Scott. I'm Ernest the Avaricious. That seat actually is being taken by my date. Oh, okay. When's your date getting here? Any second now, I'm sure. Her name is Mindy. We were set up by our mutual friends to go out on our first date today. <laughs> Aw, congrats, boo. How long have you been waiting for her to show up? Uh, about three hours. Surely there's a good explanation. She's on her way, right? Uh... Would you just give me a second to talk to my friends privately? Oh, um, sure. Definitely not rude of you to sit at my table uninvited, then exclude me from the conversation. <laughs> Guys, Ernest's date obviously isn't coming, and it's really bumming me out. We gotta help him. Okay, we need a plan. Let's do a huddle about it. Wait, where are you doing a huddle? I'm out of ideas. Prank masters! Don't worry, I've already got a plan. It's wholesome prank time. We're gonna lie, but for nice reasons. Uh -huh. Hey, Ernie, guess what? We're actually your date. All of us. Completely forgot to mention that until now. You're all Mindy. But I thought... Actually, you know what? This must just be modern dating culture. I'm okay with this. This is fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mindy, tell me more about you. Why does your dating profile describe you as a 36-year-old woman and not multiple young adults? I'm sure you get asked that a lot. Huh. Oh, it's because, uh, Brian, why is that again? Because this is a game show. <laughs> you guess which of us is Mindy, you win a cash prize. And a date, I guess. Because <laughs> we're actually one being. Mindy is short for hive mind. <laughs> Did somebody say game show? He just he explodes lurking? out from the fucking floorboards. <laughs> yep. Have you been lurking in that corner waiting for somebody to get to say game show all this time? Don't judge me. Everybody, everyone needs a hobby. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to our debut episode of Mindy or Not Mindy. I'm your celebrity host and excruciatingly eligible bachelor, the interdimensional prince. Let's start with contestant number one, the hairy fellow with the baby blue eyes. What's your name, doll? <laughs> Scott Hal. Incorrect. The answer we were looking for was Mindy. You're disqualified. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Contestant number two, the sultry spirit. Here's your question. What was the first message you sent to Ernest the Avaricious? Naughty. I'm gonna go with a dick pic. This is online dating. There's like a 75% chance any given DM is a dick pic. Nope. The correct answer was, hi Ernest, do you watch The Office? I love it personally. That just leaves contestant number three, who I suppose is now Mindy by default. Congratulations! <laughs> but since my lawyer says my dating game show needs to be needs to value consent, I'll give Ernest the option to choose a date with you or whatever's behind this mysterious door. Hmm. I'll choose the mysterious door. Congratulations, Ernest. You've won Brian's wallet and the minus two money inside it. How your wallet got behind that mysterious door truly is mysterious. But oh well, at least you got plus two soul for cheering up Ernest with cash. We <laughs> 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 got Doom's Diner. Or the planet Arium. Oh, we gotta see the stars. <laughs> Roads are like streets for cars. Whoa, Scott. Deep. <laughs> <laughs> ah, stars. Monsterkind has been fascinated by them for as long as society has been alive. Amazing. 
There's nothing like staring at the night sky and realizing that space is massive and timeless, and you're just one speck in an uncaring universe. If that gives you ennui, don't worry. There's plenty to do at the planetarium besides contemplate your own insignificance. For example, you could identify constellations, attend the comet shower, watch the laser show. Identify constellations is my favorite thing. <laughs> You'd like to learn more about the constellations, but you don't know much That's about lie. what you're looking at. <laughs> if only you had an expert to tell you more about them. Sorry to bother you, but I sense that my presence was narratively foreshadowed. Are you folks interested in learning more about the constellations? Oh! We totally are! What great timing! And I can help. I'm Andy. I got a PhD in astronomy, and I can teach you all about the science and the history of the celestial bodies. Sure, but can your fancy degree teach them how to properly attune to the ever-changing vibes of the universe? Didn't think so. Whoa, who are you? I'm Lee, expert astrologist. I can teach you how the positions of the cosmos affect your moods, your behavior, and even your future. Cool, huh? Uh, not this ridiculous star magic again. You know astrology is all hogwash, don't you? Psh, typical skeptic. Just because you can't scientifically prove something's existence doesn't mean it isn't real. I can't use science to prove that you're a huge nerd, but everybody knows it's true. Oh. <laughs> we don't. Eh, we may have a point here. As much as you'd love to watch these two experts bicker all day, you actually do want to learn about the constellations. But from whom will you learn? Cars are beautiful to value themselves. No need to pretend they're crabs, virgins, or sexy centaurs. Let's hear the astronomy take. It needs to be something else for the start of science being tons of gas exploding miles from Earth. Let's hear this god. Astronomy! <laughs> Damn right. Right you are, my friend. Why embrace a noble, undefinable magic when the real world's fascinating enough? Awesome, bro! Cool! Dr. Andy, can you tell me anything about the big boy frying pan constellation? Oh, well. An interesting fact about that constellation is actually called the Big Dipper. Whoa! You know Big Boy Frying Pan's legal name? You two must be really close. What are you telling me about Fashionable Steve? Like, do you I know where like do you know where he got his starry belt? I want one just like it. Oh, you're referring to Orion. Well, what if I told you that one of the three stars in Orion's belt is actually a nebula? Whoa! It's not a star? Wow! I had no idea my nighttime buddies were such a diverse group! Dr. Andy, can you tell me why the constellations go away? Sometimes they're there in the sky and sometimes they're not. Am I making them mad at me? Don't worry, the stars never really go away. The visible constellations just simply change as the Earth rotates around the sun. Hey! What? The Earth doesn't rotate, silly. The sun rotates around us. You can see it moving in the sky. <laughs> you think that the... Okay, I'm gonna need to grab you a textbook. You stay here. <laughs> Man, hope none of the stars in Orion's belt burn out. His pants would fall down. <laughs> this is the most you've ever seen Scott connect with academic material. You gain plus two mind learning astronomy, but lose minus two magic for snubbing astrology. It's my turn again. I didn't get the rest. The ranch or the movie set. Now with 30% more CGI. We gonna go to the ranch. <laughs> oh, I see the horses. Ooh, horses. Horses indeed, Scott. Horses indeed. <laughs> Sunshine, open fields of rolling wheat, and pounding hooves. This truly is a horse's paradise. Horses! <laughs> Science has proven that there are three key activities to do with horses. Question is, which one are you doing today? Ride the horses. Whisper to the horses. Worship the horsies. Mm. Look at those chocolate boys. Boy. Let's see, I think I'm going to. Alpha Rap, I think we're the 100 bits, the ranch. I say hi to Dr. Phil for me. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, the, ro the roving herds of Dr. Phil's. Whisper to the horsies. You enter the stables only to find a red headed fuckubus serenely braiding a horse's mane. Oh, visitors. Wait, I know you guys. We went to summer camp together. What brings you to the ranch today? Hey, boo! 
Hey, Sawyer. We're on a road trip and just wanted to check out, check the joint out. Nice Dutch braid on that horse. Thank you. I've had a lot of practice. I uh, spend a lot of time with these horses. They're so sweet and gentle, and sometimes it's just more relaxing to be among animals than people, you know? Hey. Yes, I know as a squirrel mancer. Sure, animals rock. Do people come out here to hang out with the horses often? Yeah, some people come here to braid their manes or practice drawing horse anatomy. Some hardcore horse girls even like whispering in the horse's ears. Wow, weird. What do they whisper to them? Is there like an established process to whispering to a horse? No idea. They never tell me what they say, and I figured it's not my business. Why, you want to give it a shot? A boost my oh, uh, for the hundred bits. I voted to grocery down to my brother about his tooth infection. I'm done indulging for the week. What's up here? <laughs> we're, playing mo we're playing Monster Road Trip. Yes. Oh, uh, I don't think so. What if I whisper the wrong thing and the horse thinks I'm dumb? Aww. I know a lot of people mistake my bubbliness for dumbness, which I couldn't care less about. But I don't think I could take it if a horse thought I was dumb. Fair enough. Brian, do you want to whisper to a horse? Bull rushing weird experiences with no forethought is sort of your thing, isn't it? Damn right. <laughs> Time to show your friends what whispering to a horsey is all about. You just have to figure out what to say first. Whisper the cosmic words of Mahathra that shall never be spoken. They may unleash a powerful truth beyond mortal comprehension, but keeping them to yourself is killing you. I have a gun in my pocket. Hoof me all your money and nobody gets hurt, horsey. <laughs> You want to enlighten a horse, or you want to mug a horse? Well, we're high on soul and low on money, so... <laughs> you stare down the horse, eye to eye. The horse is visibly sweating. You rock! You got this, Brian. We believe in you. GM, thank you for for nine months! Hello, Mr. Raven and Chow. Are you guys having a wonderful day? I am! I am. No. Oh, shit. Your friends are all giving you a thumbs up. They don't even know. Oh well, back to the horse. You can sense the horse is fearful for its life. You have to be intense. Make it believe you really do have a gun. You reach slowly into your pocket. Best friends ever! Oh, you gotta give a horsey a treat, Brian? This is the start of a beautiful friendship. Oh, poor Scott. He'd never approve of this. No, you can't think about that now. Gotta rob this horse. You fucking Aquine, you whisper. You'd better hand over the cash before this gets ugly. Shaking and sweating, the horse starts rustling through a pile of its hay. It pulls out a wallet with its teeth. Great! But it doesn't pull money out of the wallet. Instead, it pulls out a picture of <laughs> alongside two smaller horses. <laughs> Fuck! Does this horse have foals? Oh no, you're threatening a mother! You're a monster! Well, you, you, li you literally are, but now also on the inside! Wait, those aren't foals. Those are just adult ponies. This fucking horse is trying to emotionally manipulate you. That's your thing. <laughs> you take the photo and rip it into tiny little pieces. That seems to send the message. Despairingly, the horse gives you plus two money from its wallet. Aw, seems like you and that horse had a great emotional connection, Brian. Look how sad it is to see you go. Your friends really have no idea what a fucking psychopath you are. You're not going to come clean, obviously, but you do lose minus two soul. <laughs> Ugh, I need 14 hours of sleep. Okay, so five things to do with the rest stop. Talk to Polly or Scott, which uh, if you do like two, con uh, two conversations with one of them, you on the third time you get to a deep conversation where if you say the right thing, uh, you can get a date with them at the end of the road trip. Also, talking to them activates their passive bonus, which makes you gain and lose plus one resource for every event the following week. The info board gives you three, a list of three destinations that you can pick from, and whichever one you pick is guaranteed to show up. Bus stop is where you find hitchhikers who have, who can also be dated and have their own, uh, you know, passive effects after talking to them. You get like two randomly generated ones each time. Noodles is the merchant. 
you uh, give up one trinket and swap it for a different one for, you know, different stats based on what the hell they are. Mm-hmm. And the car, you get uh, a small amount of prank dollars just for going to the car. And you can do like a cautious or risky thing where you either gain one of your lowest stat and lose one of your highest or vice versa. Let's go to the, let's go to the noodle stand. I want to see if there's a trinket for stamina or something. No beds here? Crap. Nighttime! Welcome to Noodles Pizza Battle! <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, Gravity Falls creature. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want noodles or should I? <laughs> oh, I'm sure you have a great voice for noodles. Howdy doodly. Welcome to Noodles Swap Shop. God damn you! <laughs> <laughs> I've got all sorts of kooky crap to trade you if you've got anything worth trading me. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know. What are we going to give up? Scott Snacks, How to Road Trip the Book, Someone Else's Credit Card, or Gas Canister. Alright, let's swap the Scott Snacks with something that increases stamina, whatever the fuck this is. Let's see. We've got coin from a different dimension, nuclear launch codes. Donation to Noodles Charity for Impoverished Noodles. Or Emergency Goat Blood, which might be stamina. Let's do that. Sucker. Nope, it's magic. Fuck! Well, all the other ones definitely weren't. <laughs> Great choice. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> One day you will come to regret this. <laughs> and remember, if I see you reselling any of my products online, I'm not afraid to go back to jail. <laughs> so many choices. Oh, why would you make me do this choice? <laughs> hey, you have a Robson's choice. No, this is very much a Sophie's choice. This is fucking... We, we got... Fucking loot adventure gremlin or big titty goth GF. <sighs> my heart, my dream, my soul. Three, we can gain soul and lose magic. Uh, magic and lose money. Well, if we go for the uh, for the magic ending, we can uh, we get a bonus for having Aravi around. You invite Aravi to join your road trip. Let's unlock some map locations. Good call. Your party really needed someone with my class. We're ready for a raid now. Um, sure. Cats can't normally drive, but I am no normal cat. Let's see. All right, uh, these don't overwrite each other. They just stack up unless some of them specify like expires in a week, but the rest of them just stack. So like, oh, you I'm, took, I'm, totally, uh, I'm totally going to noodle next week and trying to get a, a ticket that gives me stamina. Let's go for that. Okay. In that case, I believe you should get both okay. of them. Uh, yeah, and uh, this is all the destinations and your progress there, too. You can check it at any time with the little tab there. Have fun at Knifeland. <laughs> yep. You ever seen a cat drive? Futuristic gas station or shopping mall. Oh, that's 80s as fuck. We gotta go there. Finally, some respite from wacky stuff. Psych! <laughs> what? Why is the car stopped? You're driving along when you pass a large statue of a saint just off the road. Standing around it are a group of hey, pilgrims. Dustin, Ninja, thank a... you very much for subscribing for 11 months. Nice. Pilgrims having a heated discussion. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters, but I don't know how much longer I can do this. 
Don't let your faith be put in crisis, brother, the other pilgrims beg. Someone tell him the footprints in the sand story again. No! I'm tired of the footprints in the sand story. If I'm gonna finish this pilgrimage, I need more than that. Huh? Whoa! Trouble in God's paradise? Oh, hello there. Normally you'd have fine mood to chat with some friendly strangers, but now isn't a good time. We're on pilgrimage to the Santiago de Compostela Cathedral, the other pilgrims explained. It's a spiritual journey we take yearly to strengthen our faith. But I'm finding that my heart just isn't in it this year. I've always been devoted to the Lord, but I feel as if I have nothing to show for it. Where are my rewards for my loyalty? For example, I always end up in the longest line at the supermarket. Why does the Lord make his devo devoted followers wait so long to buy loaves and fishies? Because the Lord gives his heaviest burdens to his strongest soldiers. He gives his he gives his funniest battles to his silliest clowns. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I fear it's just I'm just one more 30 minute wait at the quickie bar and away from succumbing to a life of sin. Lord, if you really are my friend and protector, I beg you, show me a sign. Give me something to work with here. Oh, this is sad, guys. I wish there was some way we could help this poor guy. Me too. I have an idea. Let's perform a miracle to restore this guy's faith in religion and magic. Seems a little deceptive, but it really is hard to watch this holy man lose his faith. Perform a magical miracle for him. All right. You can see up here, no matter what we do, we're losing magic. So, this choice will determine what we gain. The resurrection of Scott. Actually, this miracle is about making Scott finally learn to play, both play dead, then sit up. <laughs> or anyone can make the statue of a saint cry. But can you make the statue of a saint come? <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> It's your go. The fate of my entire channel and career is in your hands, Spez. No, it's your turn. Oh, it's mine. Yep. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, God. Oh, it's in my hands. Yep. <laughs> ah. Let's make Scott die and come back to life. Fucking coward won't jerk off a statue. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good idea. It's Gather so around, pilgrims. My, all my years, I never thought somebody would be like fucking coward afraid to jerk off a statue. <laughs> In all my fucking years. That's what these games do to people, right? <laughs> Gather around, pilgrims, to witness a genuine miracle. A genuine miracle? Do you mean you are a prophet here to dispense the teachings of a lord? Sure, let's go with that. Now watch this. <laughs> Scott, dead! Oh no, I'm dying. I'm dead. Scott flips over with his tongue sticking out. No, the poor boy cut down this brine. Lord, why must you take him so much away? It was not the Lord, the pilgrims cry. It was the girl. She killed him with a single word. She's an agent of the devil. Get her! Worry not, brothers and sisters. The Lord will come to aid Scott. <laughs> For Scott is a good boy. Pure of heart, pious of soul, and dumb of ass. We just need to believe. Scott, sit up! I'm alive! Hooray! Incredible! The Lord have giveth! I repeat, the Lord! Hath giveth! Bless you, O Saint Scott, the pilgrims weep, kissing Scott's shoes. Bless you. <laughs> oh, you have to bless me, bros. I didn't even sneeze. We'll always remember this day, Saint Scott. Next year, we'll make a pilgrimage to a spot where your resurrection took place. That sounds great. That's great. We're making a marathon thing? I always want to do one of those. The pilgrims leave, praising this confirmation of their faith. You spent minus two magic teaching Scott those tricks so fast, 
but he gained plus two mind for it. The shopping mall. It's a place where you can sort of shop online, but like offline. Hey, look who's there! You can feel young again by reviving good old ways of having fun at the mall. The arcade. The pizza parlor. Or the shoplifting. <laughs> Arcades! God, yes. This is the best choice. As you and your friends walk around the mall, you see your friend Valerie sitting on the center fountain and texting. She looks and smiles What's at you. What's up? What's up, guys? Hey, boo! Hey, Val! Long time no see. How's business? It's good. Same as always. Selling dangerous totems of ancient deities and used tampons to any fool who's willing to pay. Who? Who would pay for a used tampon? Huh. I don't know. My policy is to never ask where that shit comes from or where that shit goes. <laughs> Good policy. I also choose not to think about where my poop comes from or goes. Great minds think alike, Scott. Yeah. Anyway, I'm taking the day off and having fun in the 90s way. Celebrating peak non-critical capitalism at a shopping mall. Want to hit up the arcade with me? Oh, yes. Oh, God. I don't... I don't mean to hog voices, but I have a standing policy where I have to voice this fucker in particular. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You must. You must. <laughs> it's in my contract. You really should have read the fine print. <laughs> Welcome to my mall, target demographic. Why don't you play the new arcade game we just installed? It is, as the kids say, very Lamau. Sure, what's the game? It's called Cashy Road. You just cross the road to win. <laughs> Earn bonus points by entering your full name, social security number, and credit card info. Uh -huh. All that for an arcade game? What do you even win? Tickets. Lots of tickets. To see the new show I just produced, Ads on Ice. It's a 2.5 hour musical advertisement for ice. Just give up. Uh, I think I'd rather play literally anything else. Chicle, what game should we play first? Glitchy, off-putting game that seems to be lifted straight from a creepypasta. A claw machine where you try to grab porridge. Good luck. Dragon Heat VR, thrust your senses. The game where you don't want to play in front of your parents. Or in front of anyone at all, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm doing between the Creepypasta game or Dragon Heat VR. <laughs> see what the coin decides. Heads will be the Creepypasta game. All right. Heads is the creepy pasta game. Oh, this one. I think it's called You're Already Dead.exe. <laughs> Ominous. <laughs> yeah, it's a bold choice. I heard it just showed up in the basement one day, and the guy who find it, found it died in a forklift accident. I wouldn't play it myself, but to each their own. The game seems to be based on some beloved childhood title with a classic retro pixel aesthetic. You and two friends must retrieve the magical book to save the pixelated fantasy world. It's fun, but suddenly the screen starts glitching as if the file was heavily corrupted, deafening you all with white noise. The screen goes back to normal, but now the pixelated friends look strangely like Polly and Scott. When you cast a spell from the magic book, it releases a world-ending deity. The world is engulfed in despair. You see all your loved ones dying as a result of your actions. An eerie noise comes from the machine. It sounds like distorted versions of Polly and Scott's voices. Prank. Masters. What is he? Whoa, Polly. I don't like this game. Looks like it, us doing bad things to our friends. It's okay, Scott. It's okay, buddy. It's just this asshole arcade game messing with us. We'd never do something like this in real life in this timeline. <laughs> Credits roll with superimposed images of your friends with no eyes, while some strange smoke comes from the machine. You are filled by the cursed energy of the arcade machine, gaining plus two magic, but totally losing minus two mind. 
you see a post credit scene. It's you. Not Cheekley, but you, the person playing Monster Road Trip, in front of a door. The door opens, and some shadowy figures lunge toward you, then stab you repeatedly while screeching. Frank Masters! <laughs> Let's take this slow. Cult headquarters. Got ghosts. Or, or motel. Mm, yeah, if we're going for magic. Be careful, Scott. They'll do anything to recruit you. Don't worry, I'll always be low to my team. Are you really going to join a cult? Oh, let's join! I suppose they've got team building, all the <laughs> dead ghosts you could ever want. Maybe fun ritual orgies. If you can ignore all the murder and brainwash practices, it honestly sounds like fun. Where do you want to start? Let's see, ritual sacrifice, initiation rites, cult marketing meeting, uh, any meeny miny sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> you and your friends enter the cult's sacrificial chamber with all the optimism of the first characters to die in a horror movie. Polly, Polly, listen. Check out this holy pamphlet. The ritual sacrifice is completed to please Mothra, the deity of sacred secrecy and darkness. Completing the sacrifice will give Mothra's worship a taste of its exclusive magical powers. Cool, we can siphon some of that magic into the car afterwards. Party time! Hell yeah, I love a good old ritual sacrifice. Let's kill some goats and have a big kinky orgy in a pool of their blood. Hold your horses, you acolytes. You cannot simply wander into Mathra's sacred halls and throw yourselves into a goat blood orgy right away. Why not? Because that's not what being in a cult is about. So many new cults only really care about the orgies, about understanding their ceremonial implications. Wait, there are ceremonial implications to this? I just thought we all liked to fuck goats. Only you do that, brother goat fucker Ismael, and that's exactly why nobody wants to grind on you at the blood orgies anymore. Anyway, we now must have a proper sacrifice tier list, but new cultists must complete in the correct order. It helps us weed out those who aren't truly committed, like those sacrilegious bastards that put their careers and loved ones above the, our dark cult. Fine, we'll do it your way. This tier list says we first have to sacrifice something of great personal value. Brian, what do you suggest? Sacrifice your account on Dragon Heat so you like role-playing, wink, the MMORPG in which you've sunk over a thousand hours of play. Sacrifice eight of the 22 subscriptions to interesting newsletters you may or may not have read anyway. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's a good idea. I'm tired of my laptop getting cluttered with all those informational newsletters and videos I want to consume, but never do. Us too! Here doesn't have a miles-long Watch Later playlist I'll never clean out. Yeah, I keep meaning to watch How to Predict the Lunar Cycle, but I never get around to it. <laughs> no, I like it though, it's more fun when it's all a surprise. I'll lose this article I saved and never read on the ancient technique of making alcohol out of cashews in Goa. I mean, let's be real. I'm just gonna keep making toilet wine. Indeed. Brother Goatfucker has been subscribed to a newsletter on cheese aging techniques for years, but has never once opened it. It seems like a sophisticated and mature thing to be interested in. I like the person I'll become when I read those newsletters someday. Personally, oh, sacrifice this reminder to watch that TED talk and not to stop procrastinating and improve my life. Eh, yeah, maybe I'll keep it. I'm sure I'll watch it tomorrow. Definitely tomorrow. For your part, you've sacrificed your subscription to weekly book reviews. You've had that 10 must-reads of 20, <laughs> 2007 article bookmarked for too long. You and the Mahathra cultists and the communal relief, or bask in the communal relief of admitting you've, you're never getting around to learning new things and gain plus two magic from the sacrifice. But you do lose minus two mind for losing all the knowledge that could have been. Yeah, ten. Mm, yeah, cat regular time. motel or troll gas station. <laughs> what a bad troll. <laughs> <laughs> Order 
or something, if you dare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I dare. <laughs> Let's go. Dare, dare. When do we get to the final boss? You mean the destination? <laughs> This gas station looks like it was lifted straight out of a children's storybook. A children's storybook where the fantasy heroes drive cars, I guess, but nonetheless. Got the ice! Despite all the weird and whimsical elements, it looks like this gas station still has all the normal functions. What do you do? Build a tank. Fill that the restroom tank. or go to the shop. All fill, right. fill that tank. You park under the ancient Fantasyland Bridge over top this gas station and go inside to pay. I, uh, wait, I mean, welcome ye weary travelers to the mystical petrol gas passage. How may I aid your quest today? One gasoline, please. Uh, sure, whatever. How are you going to pay for it? <laughs> With money, of course. I had to make some world go round. I definitely don't want the world to stop going around, so let's keep spending. Sorry, but petrol doesn't accept money as a form of payment. What? What? But you need money. Look, at first, I didn't get it either, but let me tell you. These little papers don't look like much, but they can be used to get anything you want. Like, right now, I want gas. So I give you the papers, you give me gas, then you can give me the papers, then you can give the papers to someone else to get something you want. Oh! It's a magic... It's a magical system called... Econology. Huh? Or is it economation? I think it's economy, sir. And trust me when I say that economy is meaningless to trolls. Petrol only accepts magical forms of payment, like dragon scales or cursed lockets or firstborn children. Damn. Too bad none of you are having a baby anytime sooner. This would be a lot easier. How else can you magically pay for this gas? Forfeit your fondest memory. Hunt, or hunt down, down a boar. boar. <laughs> yeah, hunt down a boar to feed the gas pump. That was done for centuries before coin ever existed. <laughs> yeah, that'd work. Do you have a wild boar? Ah. <laughs> Not on hand, but luckily this highway's full of them. Actually, a huge safety hazard. Oh! Woohoo! Let's hunt! Thank God you packed your medieval flails and crossbows, or this would never work. Minus two stamina later, you've tracked and killed a wild boar. Okay, great. Now you just need to smear the boar's blood on your hands, faces, and the gas pump. <laughs> cool. I want to do a boar's blood smoky eye. I'll recite the sacrificial incantation. Just got to find the page in my employee ritual manual. Oh, ancient trolls, accept this blood spilled for your great horde and allow these travelers passage they can barely afford. And enjoy this sacrifice, old as man, old as time, old as the tedious practice of chanting and rhyme. The ground shakes, and there's a sound like the earth just let out a fart of biblical proportions. I guess that means your transaction's been accepted. Here's your plus two magic. Have a trolltastic day or whatever. Try not to hit any other wild boars on your way out. Okay. <laughs> uh, poor Sadie. She works literally every retail job you come across. <laughs> so awful. <laughs> uh, let's see. Secret government lab. So secret you can find it on a road trip. Or the con. <laughs> Are we there yet? I knew I should have fast traveled. <laughs> Yay, a con. It's the perfect place to be your authentic nerdy self without fear of judgment. <gasps> Look who's there. There are cosplayers, merch vendors, panels, gaming tournaments, overpriced food. So much to do, so little time. What activity do you want to try out? Oh, we're attending the fandom meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you see there's a fandom meetup happening in one of the atriums. Maybe there will be free refreshments. You head inside. Welcome to the con. Ah, uh, Zoe, my love. <laughs> in her Garfield Kigurumi with her lasagna body pillow. <laughs> <laughs> lasagna. Yeah. In Japan, they call it a lasagna makara. <laughs> oh, oh my god. 
Oh, hey guys. Welcome to the meetup. How long have you been fans of the critically acclaimed indie game Human Prom? Hey, bro. Hey, Zoe. I actually never heard of it. Do humans even have prom? It sounds weird. Really? Then you should keep a low profile. Human Prom stands are serious, and they'll get pissed if they find out there's outsiders at the Peace Accords brokering. Huh? The what accords? All rise, says someone with a gavel and a powdered wig. The annual renegotiations of the Human Prom Ship Wars Peace Accords are now in session. First, we present the Purple Achievement Awards to veterans of the Ship Wars who saw horrors untold in those dark trenches. Those poor, brave souls. May their URLs never be forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> now, let us begin by hearing from the Daniel Oswald Shipping Faction. I've been told you have some grievances to air. We sure the fuck do! <laughs> cries a ship veteran. A ship war veteran. We want those nasty Daniel Bryson shippers to stay out of our hashtags. Our lawyers have screenshots proving that Dason's violated the peace accords and distributed Dason fan art on our land. But the Doswalds fucking started it, a fandom historian argues. Even after the ship wars ended, you sent spies into hashtag Dason to start drama and weaken us from the inside. I knew Dasons and Doswalds always get the floor, a juror shouts. Where's the representation for smaller factions like the Dagons? This is bullshit. Order in the court, snaps the judge. Shipping romanceable NPCs like Daniel and Logan together is stupid. The court only recognizes NPC PC ships. Oh god, I feel so called out. <laughs> <laughs> but Daniel and Logan have so much in-game chemistry. Call my OTP stupid again and I'll fucking dox you, your honor. <sighs> all anyone ever does at these things is argue. Why can't we all just enjoy human prom peacefully? Oh, man, I wish everybody would just be friends. Right, what can we do to make everyone get along? Educate the next generation of fans in empathy. Upon entering the fandom, there will be a syllabus of mandatory fanfic covering every ship. We need a Supreme Court for the fandom. Presided by an impartial party. Me, a very fair arbiter, who will only accept a few bribes. <laughs> yeah. Great plan. That's a great idea. Lots of prejudices have been defeated by empathy. And fiction is a great way to learn empathy by living an experience other than your own. So you're suggesting that we all collaborate on a fandom library? A fanfic historian gasps. That would be my dream. Can we include my Daniel Melinda Coffee Shop AU in the syllabus? A fic writer asks shyly. I know it's not a popular pairing, but Delanda is just so cute. We're considering any fic? Someone says mischievously. Even my crack fic where all the human prom characters magically turn into appliances? Are OC fics allowed? Asks another. I've got a fake dating self-insert where my OC meets Daniel's moms at summer camp. I'd be honored to include it. Can we put in my Daniel Zelda fic where they support each other's emotional journeys into exploring their truths? They're the Garfield Naruto of human prom. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one that ends with Zelda and Daniel getting married in robot mechas? The judge asks. That's one of my favorites. Of course it'll go in. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's so nice the fandom finally found common ground. We're all Daniel stands. We're all total human fuckers. Isn't that what matters? Look at you, solving a fandom conflict with empathy. You gain plus two soul for this incredible feat. However, since you had the idea, the judge rules that you have to be the one to read all the existing human prom fanfic to decide what's going in their official syllabus. It takes so goddamn long. <laughs> You lose minus two hype for turning this into actual homework. Might take a short right. ten hour going back to noodles. Yeah, you know where I'm going. Let's see what the comfiest spot is. Ugh, I need my fortune. Here comes hours a noodles trash profile. Howdy. Still got all these pet all those pesky worldly possessions, huh? Why not trade him to me for some of the weird crap I've got? Nothing matters anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, um, let me see. Ba -ba -da, this is hype. Uh, we could... 
we've got a shitload of soul, so we could probably stand to lose the postcard from our mom. <laughs> My madre. Because we know this one was magic from last time. This one's definitely money. This one's hype, so... Yeah, this All one's right. soul. And I believe, out of these, the bounty hunter contract, an exclusive cult member ring, a possibly too smart toilet, or macaroni art... That the macaroni art, being food, mm -hmm. could be stamina. Alright, pick the one that you think is stamina. I can smell danger! Yep! Yes! Oof. Are you sure you want that? Uh, could I choose a different item if I don't? We're all gonna die! Nope. Whoa! Bye! <laughs> Ugh, so many choices. Hmm. Oh god, look at her! <laughs> so fucking cute! <laughs> oh god, look at her! <laughs> food truck. A Ravi, monster slayer, and food truck owner. The food truck is great. I've never pinned- I'd never have pinned you as a cook. Well, I am an adventurer first, but adventures call for a diverse set of skills. I need to craft all sorts of things, from weapons to meals. I use the latter mostly for the food truck, and the former only on occasion. But yeah, cooking is an essential skill. Many of the times I've sat around a fire with party members to cook and eat a good stew as we prepared to raid a dungeon. Makes sense. Mm, I can see it now. Must go into a dun if you must go into a dungeon for several days, it's good to be resourceful with food. Absolutely. It's a skill all of us slayers must have at hand. I learned it from my mother. Uh, what? She was a slayer, too. Mm, yes, being a slayer is a bit of a lineage thing. She was a strong, fierce woman, my mom. She taught me how to add fla flavor to any strange thing I might be forced to eat in order to survive while adventuring. When she left for a mission, her spice rack was almost as important as her weapons. I imagine focusing a bit on cooking must be nice. Like reliving the memories of cooking with your mom, no? Yes, I guess so. I like having the food truck as this little side thing. Then there's Calculester. He loves doing stuff that helps him understand organic life better. Good old Hex. And Hex, who just really likes food. Especially junk food. It's nice that this food truck project has brought you together. It does. We got the truck, and now we just brainstorm and test different theme ideas. Soup in a can? Hot dogs? <laughs> The only breakfast food truck, the soup in a can food truck, the deep fried rattlesnake and cobra heart food truck, the just hot dogs food truck. We try to take turns so everyone can test their ideas. Some are better than others. <laughs> well, Ralphie, if you ever need a subject for testing new food ideas, here I am. I may hold you to that. She actually does. You spend the rest of the night talking about food while you try some hot dogs and soup in a can. The hot dogs are definitely the right way to go. Inventory hoarder. You gotta be ready for adventure. Robbie keeps buying all sorts of magical artifacts with your money. <laughs> Next week, every turn, you'll gain plus magic and lose money. <laughs> you ever seen a cat drive? There you go. Hey, yeah. Let's take this slow. Money is the lowest resource expires in one week. That seems to be perfect for us. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, there's a distinct possibility. Um, sure. Sleep. Uh, quantities. Yeah. On our way to the Dreamed Dominions. Hot damn. Have you ever seen a cat drive? The Mer Kingdom Outpost, or the Rave in the Desert? Let's see what the fuck the Mer Kingdom is all about. Robbie, where's Hex? Being someone else's problem. 
<laughs> In what appears to be a former aquarium, you see the Mer Kingdom flag flying from the rooftops. I do not mess with the Mer Kingdom. It seems the underwater monarchs have been expanding their territories. Well, no reason not to visit the tyrannical ocean overlords. What do you want to do? Let's... Let's attend a fancy ball. This sounds fun. Right. Gentlemen, for God's sakes, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. <laughs> <laughs> you wander around the outpost until you find a grand ballroom. It's full of fish and fancy clothing. On a balcony overlooking the ballroom, Princess Belanda and Miranda Vanderbilt, or Princesses Belanda and Miranda Vanderbilt, step out to address the crowd. May I just say this is one of my favorite locations because the, for the three different you know events you go to here, both of them have different outfits for all of them. So <laughs> there's like three different sets of outfits and they're all fucking gorgeous. That's amazing. Yeah. Look alive. There's Look alive. Oh, I'll bet yeah. you. Oh, go. Okay. No, go. go okay. Ahead. You want to be, be the princess? Or you want to be her? They're, they're both princesses. You oh, be okay. Which one? You want to be the left one or the right one? <laughs> I'll be the right one. <laughs> You'll be the right one. Look alive, new subject. Rejoice your newfound freedom under the Mer King. Huzzah. The icky wartime fighting is finally over. You can rest easy that you'll never be again be forced to jump through a hoop on penalty of being whipped. The liberated fish clap their fins in jubilation. And take comfort in the fact from now on you'll be forced to fight a do hard labor for the Mer King at penalty of death. There's less applause for that statement, like almost none. <laughs> but don't worry, we're benevolent overlords. You'll get paid for the work you do. Oh. Sorry, an advisor is whispering in my ear that you won't be getting paid. But at least all your labor will be for a good cause. Oh, it's not for a good cause? What do you mean, stop repeating everything I say aloud? You can't give your princess orders. Off with this advisor's head. Let the ball commence. Have fun tonight, because it will be the last night off you get for the rest of your short lives. Guess that's our cue. Scott, want to dance with me? Thanks, Polly. Sure, thanks. We could ask you dance, Chicle. Well, not Polly or Scott, you guess. You'll have to choose from the liberated denizens of the former aquarium. Your ballroom dancing partner will pretty much set the tone for the entire night, so choose wisely. The lonely, emotionally disenchanted, no one is dancing because he's still haunted by the disappearance of his firstborn. <laughs> Philipper, the trained dolphin dancer, you need to tear up a dance floor. Yes. <laughs> give me, give guess as dolphin. <laughs> Yes. Philipper, all right. Philipper. Uh, the saddest Finding Nemo reference over here. <laughs> right. <laughs> you approach the dolphin, currently balancing the aquarium manager's severed head on his nose, and ask him if he wants to dance. <laughs> you you want to be Philipper? Yes, yes. Okay. Ooh la la, just did my own happiness for a change. Huh. Look at that, bro. Guess he's always a happy thing. Wee oui, wee, oui. that was once true for me. Long ago, I was the most spirited, talented dancer in my whole pond. But then those joyless aquarium fuckers captured me, and since then, dance has become a vicious mockery of my former freedom. I was forced to jump through hoops just to be fed a bowl of gruel. That was not an aphorism. I literally jumped through hoops. Man. I'm so sorry, boo. You don't have to dance if it's like a cruel reminder of your suffering. No, don't fret. I still love to dance. I'm especially excited to dance on my captor's graves. That's not that far as a reason. The Vanderbilt's graciously decorated the dance floor with the festering corpses. Yippee! <laughs> you and Philip are morbidly dance the night away. You tap dance on the corpses' ribs, juggle their skulls, and do a limbo with their spines. Holly and Scott even toss Philipper some of the body's severed fingers to reward his moves. He catches them in his mouth. Yes! Yes! Let them eat the flesh of their oppressors! You lose two stamina dancing all night, but gain two hype from Philipper's bloodthirsty moves. Are we there yet? I'm tired. The Psychus or the Carnival. Ooh, the, the clowning mm. or the carnival. <laughs> but, but, not a lot of time to do shots. 
I like your nail polish, Ravi. Thanks. It's cockatrice blood. She. <laughs> <laughs> What's more fun than a carnival? There are games, rides, people in costume, and all that junk and all the junk food you could ever want. Silly long legs. <laughs> The first order of business is obviously consuming a pile of cotton candy bigger than your head. Then, while you ride the resulting sugar rush, what do you do next? Uh, carnival games, free show. I have some mirrors. This is a chill one. You wander through the Hall of Mirrors until you stumble upon an unexpected visage. What? Oh, hey. Who are you? I'm you. Mirror you. Hey, mirror me. You good? <laughs> yep. All good. Hello, everybody. It's me. <laughs> short, short mirror, Brian. Uh... Oh, hello. So, what's your guys' thing? I like napping. Me too. <laughs> me three. Mm. Somebody say napping. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Look at me. I have long, funny legs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you do. You keep walking into other mirror versions of yourself. After a while, you get tired. So you and your mirror selves lay down and take a nap. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's it. That's all that happens. <laughs> hey. Hey, it's me. <laughs> funny short, Brian. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. All the different player characters have unique, uh, you know, interactions with that one. Brian's is that all his selves just chill and nap. <laughs> let's see, we got the desert foot, the heart, the heart and soul of the, the desert. desert, or the fortune teller. Let's go to the fortune teller. I always like fortune tellers. We've been grinding this road trip for forever. Normal people call that driving, Ravi. <laughs> <laughs> is fortune telling real, or is it all bogus? Only one way to find out. Uh, shiny ball. <laughs> <laughs> the psychic who runs this caravan <laughs> has a sign posted outside with all the different services she offers. There are so many different ways to glimpse the future. What do you want to do? Oh, palm reading's one of my favorites. Terror reading's another one of my favorites, too. Shit. Let's do terror reading. Yeah, terror reading's one of my favorites. My grandma did this all the time. Nice. Well, you've always liked birthday cards and playing cards. Why not try your luck with fortune-telling cards, too? Welcome to Hope Halco's Tent of the Great Beyond. If you want your cards read, take a seat and shuffle the tarot deck. The last time I got my, um, my cards read was, um, like a month and a half ago. My, yeah. my grandma used to do it for me all the time before she passed, and her stuff was always, like, blunt and to the point because she knew what all the cards were, and she had, like, <laughs> nice. ancient fucking cards that looked like... It, it looked like she stole them from, like, Aleister Crowley. Like, they were ancient <laughs> fucking cards. You can't prove she didn't. And then the, the guy, the person, uh, the lady I got to do my tarot reading about a month and a half ago, because, like, I'm I'm fucking weird. I'm I'm oddly mystically inclined like i look at cards more than i do like pews or confessions or shit like that yeah. uh so like i was uh throwing my shit on the table she read my cards and like she was like firmly bumpy to the point where i just kept looking at her like are are you a dominatrix like i don't know what the <laughs> fuck this is like i'm just like you're just do, do i say yes ma'am thank you ma'am like i'm just like uh and like i don't know what it is but i'm here for it weren't cursed or mystical they're all like disney princess ones and i'm like who the fuck is doing my fortune with disney <laughs> princess i don't i don't need cinderella to tell me oh my fate's all about and just like believe myself no shit sherlock <laughs> you're not familiar with the psychic disney dominatrix uh, you gotta get up on my level, apparently. <laughs> I just want Chief play will start with you. Oh, no. It's so, like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I need to be on this for a second, because I'm just like, <laughs> I had actual ones that were from cards that looked like they all had their own magic score. Like, the entire time, I'm like, is my grandmother a wizard? Like, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck she had, because she had, like, wizards, like, she had, like, fucking herbs and poultices and tinctures, like, she... And now... I get Cinderella and fucking Snow White come like what the fuck is my life? <laughs> Cinderella, Princess of Fire. 
<laughs> yeah, she had Disney Princess tarot cards. I thought they were cute. <laughs> but like, do a reading for like the astral light of my soul. I don't want to go ahead and put my faith in the mouse. <laughs> uh, let's see, you drew the bell card. That means you fuck monsters. <laughs> I could. <laughs> <laughs> Topical. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm done with that. <laughs> okay. I'm talking. Cheekly, we'll start with you. We'll do a three card spread, the card to represent your past, present, and future. Your past card is the Hanged Man. It's a card depicting a tragic fool. It represents your journey so far, a series of misadventures where you tend to make the wrong choices. Yikes, a tragic fool could totally be your middle name, to be fair. Your present card is Justice. This card represents an unusually high and enterprising libido and a colorful sex life. Nice! Nice! Clap them cheeks, Chickley. You didn't let me finish. It represents that in the upright position, but it was drawn upside down, which inverts its meaning. It means Chickley doesn't fuck. Like, at all. <laughs> well, sheesh, it's not your fault you haven't gotten any ass lately. You aren't playing a dating sim this time. <laughs> Chickley, hope tarot cards are kind of reading you <laughs> to filth. Why don't you try to make your own destiny? Mm -hmm. I have some better cards in my pockets. Don't ask. Swap out the future card with one of these. It seems mean to rig Hope's tarot reading, but hey, if she really is psychic, then she should have seen the switcheroo coming. Pick a card, any card. The blue-eyed white dude dragon. With... <laughs> Random dude with very cool sunglasses. The legendary blue-eyed white dragon card in mint condition. The plus four. You get four more cards, essentially altering your future. <laughs> Give me the blue-eyed white dragon, this is going to be great. <laughs> For your future, we have... <gasps> the legendary blue-eyes white dragon card in mint condition? These cards are quite rare. They're used by ancient kings and their court magicians to bring wealth and prosperity into their kingdoms for centuries. I think the kings also use these cards to battle each other in the shadow games or something. I don't know, that's treading too far into nerd territory for me. Anyway, there's money in your future, Chikle. Plus two money, to be precise. I'd like to buy that card from you. Uh, what are you talking about? This is your card, Hope. Why would you... Cut the ball. I know Chikle planted the card to rig the reading, which was rude, by the way. But you can make it up to me by selling me the dumb card. Fine, that's fair. Hope takes the card reverently in her hands and rips it in half. What? <laughs> <laughs> No way! <laughs> Holy shit! Holy shit! Not the legendary blue eyes white dragon! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I destroyed it. It was too dangerous to even exist. The fucking Entire Jesus empire. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Entire empires have fallen due to the incredible nerdy power this wicked card wields. Wait, who the fuck are you? Who? Me? I just like to join in when people scream dramatically. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. Still, not cool, Hope. Well, that power was fun while it lasted, you suppose. You still lose minus two soul for rigging the reading. Apparently my pizza's been... Okay. Good. They never prepared me, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this chat, this game goes absolutely apeshit with the references. References inside of references, inside of other references. It's great. It's from a video. Only one blue eyes is actually rare. It's the one from a video game and goes from hundreds in damaged condition. Well, if it's from a video game, how is it a physical card? Check and mate. Doggo. <laughs> Look, Gio, it wasn't my call to destroy it. <laughs> no, I will not release the doggo. She knows what she did. <laughs> Still, 
So they Still didn't good. ring my doorbell or called yeah. me. And when I came out, there are two squirrels on top of it. <laughs> and one of them was like gnawing the side of the fucking pizza box. Great. <laughs> so that'll be a phone like, call tomorrow. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I spent twenty-one dollars for the coldest, for squirrel pizza, shittiest squirrel nod pizza I have ever had in my life. I just want you to know that. <laughs> for your entertainment, he for did your that. King of comedy. <laughs> comedy. <laughs> All right, where That's are we going? Comedy. Uh, let's see. So, you know, I think we're going to the Wild West town, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which ain't big enough for the two of us. Well, did you even realize it was outside? Yeah, because I tracked my order, looked at it, it said it was delivered, and I was like, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Papa John's. <laughs> <laughs> also, welcome to the land of six shooters, outlaws, wild stallions, and ten gallon hats. Yikes. <laughs> You've always wanted to be a real cowboy, or at least the kind of cowboy they show on TV, and now's your chance. So what are you going to do, partner? <laughs> Horses. The saloon. Oh, we got going to duel at high noon. Mm -hmm. This village is filled with cowboys showing off the big irons on their hips like they're just begging for a high noon shoot-off. But more importantly, it's filled with cute horses. You see brown horses, black horses, speckled horses, horses that Polly and Scott are siphoning magic from. Wait. I can explain. Oh, it's just you. Sorry, Brian, I thought you were a cowboy here to duel us for fucking with, your, with his horse. Which begs the question of why Polly and Scott are fucking with a cowboy's horse. Well, we're low on gas, but don't you give us directions of nearest gas station? Oh, I thought cars have horsepower, right? Let's just get power for, for the car straight from the horses. Can you believe it worked? We just got some free plus two magic with no consequences. Hey, you hear a cowboy shout. What in tarnation are you doing to Cheddar Biscuit? Oop, spoke too soon. That guy looks mad. What do we do, Polly? Same as always. Blame someone else. <laughs> Brian did it. I saw the whole thing. And I reckon you and me got a problem, Brian. Draw your gun and duel me at high noon if you ain't yellow bellied. Great. Looks like you're not getting out of this without a duel. So you'd better suggest a duel you have a chance at winning. Turn your backs on each other, walk 10 paces, and just keep walking. Start new lives. Never look back. <laughs> <laughs> Classic duel to the death, but replace duel to the death with truth or dare match. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. What? But truth or dare is not near as exciting as a regular duel to the death. It ain't even a duel at all. I agree that truth or dare doesn't quite pack the same and is too hype as two cowboys quick drawn in the desert. But Brian kept the word classic in the name, so by law, they're technically the same. Can't argue with that. Let the truth or dare duel begin. In round one, the cowboy gets you to admit that you wet the bed until you were 13. Rough start. You retaliate by daring him to lick a mescaline cactus. Then he dares you to bare knuckle box the purple fairies flying around his head. You point out that you can't do that because he's hallucinating them, but you lose a point anyway. It's looking bleak, but then inspiration hits you. You dare the cowboy to shoot himself in the leg. Hmm. Normally I'd think that shooting myself in the leg is a pretty dumb idea. But I don't want to lose. And I didn't get to shoot anything earlier, so <laughs> why not? <laughs> the cowboy shoots himself in the leg and quickly remembers why not. Fatal blood loss. Touchdown! <laughs> Good work, bro! You live another day! Or at least until Scott and I somehow endanger your life with our, with our antics again. Yeah, or just a thought. You and Scott could do your best to not do that. Yeah. Unlikely. Now let's go. We got a road trip to survive. <laughs> Might take a short 10-hour power nap. 
Let's see. Let's go. Hmm. Let's go to the car. And chill out. Night time. You check Polly's dare list and decide to dumpster dive. It's a bold move, especially since you don't know when you're going to get to take your next shower. I'm a cat. But it's also a pro <laughs> yes, but it's also a profitable one. Because you find half a name brand shoe, a tub of barely expired queso, and some cool dentures. Score. You gain plus three useless junk and plus fifteen prank dollars. Don't be a cautious planner. We lose one magic and gain one stamina. Or a risky traveler. But vice versa. We need magic. Give us magic. Well, I don't know. We uh, we gain one magic from Aravi every turn anyway, and we're uh, and if we hit twenty five, we get to a destination, and we're trying to. Um, there should be an event, uh, a road event that pops up and puts us on a special like quest line to try and do along the way. So we don't actually need that much magic right away, technically speaking. Oh, okay. Well, this is your rodeo. You do it. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Let's see what the comfiest spot. Plus the um, the amount of stats you get for decisions goes up the further you go in. Mm. So I think uh, I think this week, now that we're into week three, we'll be losing like gaining and losing plus three of each stat. So. Oh, stamina yeah. that low if we get like you know two of them or so it could game over us okay mm -hmm. ah yeah recently I got the scroll for mounts the what now it's a powerful scroll that gives you a special skill for riding mounts I had to visit a sanctuary in the mountains to get it where I faced riding challenges while a wise monk reviewed my technique hmm Ravi, do you mean you got your driver's license? My driving what? No, no, Brian, I told you. It's a magical scroll that gives you the skill to ride mounts. The scroll of mounts. Pretty sure it's a driver's license. <laughs> Thing is, I crawl so many dungeons, I have quite a bit of loot. So I was thinking of getting myself a good mount. Tell me, what would a good mount? Or what would be a good mount for a Ravi Mishra? Good question. I value adaptability over speed, really. When I travel, it's less about being in a rush and more about going to faraway lands, sometimes inhospitable ones. I need a good, reliable mount that doesn't require lots of maintenance. I adventure too much to spend much time and gold on the mount. Ah, extra points if I can put a cup holder on it. That's always useful. Totally. <laughs> oh, a fucking course that has an aftermarket cup holder. <laughs> <laughs> Can't adventure without a good cup of coffee at hand. You know it, Brian. Perfect. I think I know enough now. I will proceed to give you the best mount recommendation ever. Whoa, that's bold of you. Let's raise the stakes. If your recommendation is bullshit, I will stab you in the leg and leave. Uh, okay. <laughs> you search for the best mount suggestion in your phone. Secretariat, celebrity racehorse, remains the undefeated champion... Thanks to its strict keto diet and its daily dose of scenic strolls on the beach. Bizball, the battle boar. It's a seasoned, sturdy mount known for being mad thick. <laughs> Bigotees, the regularly the regular sized rabbit. It's a very portable mount with the cutest whiskers. <laughs> Which is, I hate to go off theme. <laughs> I think she would literally kill us for suggesting Bigotees. <laughs> Ooh, look at this bodacious boar. Bizball, huh? Yeah, it's even spelled with a fancy diuresis. But my phone doesn't display it properly. And by your phone, we mean this game. We can't support diuresis, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can let your imagination fly and imagine there's a diuresis in Bizball. You can even be adventurous and put it over an unexpected letter. Go for it. The B. The second B. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh la la. A battle boar with a fancy name? Sign me up. 
<laughs> name is an homage to that famous bard that sang the much more danceable version of Ave Maria. Look it up. <laughs> okay, okay. Enough about the name. Don't get me wrong. It's cool. But I am here looking for a good mount, Brian. Well, look no further. Nice. This ball is sturdy, big, and durable. Its thick skin is perfect for resisting all sorts of terrains and temperatures. It can also survive attacks and other collisions. Hmm, you're not wrong. Look at that big boar butt. You can surely put a cup holder there. <laughs> I could fight while mounted and drink my coffee? Now that's something. Brian, I think you nailed it here. This ball could very well become my mount. I am indebted to you. You pay me back by taking me for a ride on your battle board. Okay, it's a date. Uh, what? A date? I mean, uh, uh, I just about take you on a ride on my battle board, okay? Make of it what you want. <laughs> okay. Make of it for the raid, man. <laughs> you keep looking at pics of Bizball while Ravi daydreams about the cool trip she's going to take once she gets it. Ravi, more than a friend? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Just slapping, yeah. <laughs> just slapping it, going. God damn it. Cats can't normally drive, but I am no normal cat. Let's see. Only one resource is above a 12, seems to be where we're going. Let's do that. All right, I just want to chill. Uh, two or four fit a trinket that gives you magic. Uh, yeah. Okay. Ah, dimes. <laughs> dimes. Let's see. Let's see. Pet contest. Please hold your pause. Or pancake diner. <laughs> How much pancake can you pan take? Mm -hmm. huh? 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 <laughs> Ooh, we're getting here. Let's open up a weird happens. Hey, uh, you just reached a high amount of magic. Good for you. Does that mean you're aiming for the magic based destination? If so, there's a wacky adventure that you could unlock or that could unlock a layer for that destination. Want to go for it? Duh! Oh. <laughs> Great. The adventure will be waiting for you on the road. Sorry for breaking the fourth wall. See ya. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and the best breakfast is a fluffy stack of carbs smothered in syrup. Good old pancakes. So yep. I, uh, I actually told the devs on the Discord that they were single-handedly spiking worldwide pancake sales because uh ollie from hollow live was playing this one night and she got to this event she was like oh pancake sounds so good right now and she like paused the playthrough to order del <laughs> delivery pancakes from mcdonald's and, <laughs> when, and after the stream she was sitting there eating them and talking about how fucking good they were and i was like man pancakes do sound good <laughs> right now and delicious. i stopped at a doll diner for pancakes on the way home <laughs> from work <laughs> probably get some fucking pancakes tonight. What are you talking about? Yeah. You see that this diner has some absolutely enormous menu options. I hope you're hungry. So many pancakes to eat, so little time. What sort of meal do you want to order? Five pancakes! <laughs> <laughs> Give me some goddamn pancakes! <laughs> Just eat food like a regular person. Eat the biggest meal. Pancake eating contest! You enter the diner and are greeted by the hostess. Uh, welcome to Pancake <laughs> Paradise. Are any, of, are any of you entering our pancake eating championship today? Huh. <laughs> yeah, should, nah, I didn't do any more or anything. I think I just, oh, just cheerily from the sidelines. <laughs> Brian and I might give it a shot. Maybe there's a cool prize. Psst. Want me to mix some laxatives in the pancake batter to ensure a victory, boo? Tempting, but no thanks. I'm going to eat a disgusting amount of carbs to win a competition. I'd rather do it on my own merit. First, you guys need to compete or to complete this readiness questionnaire to see if your body can handle the amount of pancake you're about to consume. One, are you legally allowed to consume pancakes in this country? 
this one, yes. Let's hope she doesn't ask about Croatia. <laughs> Two, do you have any syrup allergies? Nope. The only thing I'm allergic to is not having a good time. Three, have you taken any appetite-enhancing drugs? Entering the competition with the munchies is strictly forbidden. Nah, I'm clean today. <laughs> Fuck! Guess I'm disqualified. <laughs> All right, Brian, you're good to enter. Which weight class do you want to compete in? Pancake Boy Jolly Race, born to pancake. The epic pancakes tournament arc, pancake to the death. Pancake Beyond, consume the concept of pancake. <laughs> pancake Beyond. <laughs> this one is a hot lion, man, so I'm gonna do that one. <laughs> <laughs> You're easy to please, Spaz. Yes. <laughs> You go to a long table where the other competitors are waiting. Many of them have colored hair and weird outfits and general protagonist vibes. I've mastered the art of ancient pancake jutsu, one of them is saying. I trained for nine years inside an active syrup volcano for this contest. <laughs> That's nothing, says the other. My mother was THE pancake, winner of every pancake eating championship since 1964. I'm taking home the gold in her honor. That's nice, sir. Would you like to supersize your drink for a dollar more before the competition starts? I would like to like get mega supersized. It's the only drink size worthy of my power. I'll just bring you the soda hose. Knock yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, these competitors are really serious. Maybe you're in over your head. <laughs> Don't worry, Brian. You got this. I'm your sensei now. And I'm going to coach you to victory. <laughs> you got to open your chakras to win this thing. But most of all, you gotta open your butt chakra. Butt chakra. Do you mean my anus? Yeah, but I'm gonna keep calling it a butt chakra. Sounds more powerful and less icky. Go! And remember, bro, the best athlete is only as good as his sporting equipment. For you, it's gonna be this toilet I took from the bathroom. Perfect. The eating contest begins, and with your butt chakra wide open, you smoke the competition on your porcelain throne. Wow. That was the worst thing I've ever seen. But you won. Congrats, I guess. <laughs> Hooray! You gain three hype for winning, but you lose three stamina for the uh, butt chakra strain. <laughs> Your turn. The A hole. Lake. <laughs> the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we gotta go to the hole, man. <laughs> okay, rather than getting wet, we're getting holier than now. Holier. <laughs> uh, why is the road always so uneventful? <laughs> You're driving along when you pass your friend Dahlia, fleeing a burning castle on a chariot pulled by a griffin and holding overflowing bags of gold coins. Hey, bro. Hey, Dahlia, what are you up to? Hey. Just another siege gone right. I won't bore you with the details. I'd much rather hear about the wacky misadventures you guys have been going on. <laughs> right now, we're on our way to a pocket dimension filled with magic and mayhem. Actually, you want to come with us? Sorry, I'm eating the squirrel pizza. I've heard this place <laughs> is the most fun to visit when you have an adventuring party. I know that was improv, but that is definitely a thing Scott would say. Sorry, I'm eating the squirrel pizza. <laughs> 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 I'm intrigued a magical realm full of riches to pillage and beasties to defeat sounds like exactly my scene are you guys sure you're prepared for an adventure though I know books and movies make the idea of a plucky band of idiots going on a heroic journey seem really easy but this is real life we're talking about you're heading into the unknown where death could be waiting for you around every corner you gotta prepare for anything I hear you. What do you think we should bring on the adventure, then? Don't ask me. Those sorts of questions are what war advisors are for. I'm a general. Woman of action. Well, the closest thing we've got to an advisor is Chikle. So, what you got, boo? You don't know what they use as currency that are you acquire the only thing holds value Top one sounds like stamina. <laughs> Let's 
to get some stamina. The source of chicken nuggies. Bottom one might be hype if I had to guess. You exert minus three magic to cast the summoning spell. And from the magic cloud you created, out walks chicken. What the hell? <laughs> oh, I like her. She's cute and poofy. She gives eggs to feed us on our adventure. I ordered a chicken and an egg from Amazon. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Was this puny bird really the secret ingredient to chicken nuggies? Mm -hmm. Yep. Think about it. Sometimes chicken nuggies are dinosaur shaped. It must be a reference to the chicken's dino ancestors. Interesting theory. Let's test it. The chicken lets out a terrified squawk and lays an egg. Look, our investment is already paying off. Let's eat. Hooray. You all work together to make a delicious omelet and eat it as a group, gaining plus three stamina. Okay, I admit. This feathery, endless food machine will be pretty helpful on our adventure. I accept it as a member of our squad. In fact, could I maybe keep the chicken for now? It'd make a cute mascot for my chair hit. Sure. Just remember to give her back later and or save some nuggies for us. You leave Dahlia with her new friend and continue on your journey. Hopefully you'll meet up with them later in the adventuring realm. Send Chicle to the hole. <laughs> to the hole. A hole in the desert. Man, they'll turn anything into a tourist trap, huh? My greatest concoction. <laughs> <laughs> Some say the hole is bottomless. That can't really be true. Can it? Well, since you're here, what do you want to do? Admire the hole. Forfeit material goods. Pull a prank! <laughs> Pull a prank on the hole. <laughs> you're just getting pranked, hole! <laughs> yep. There are plenty of other visitors here, ripe for the pranking. You and your friends scope out your next target. <laughs> you, you want to be camp director Miss Weaving? Yes. <laughs> Look, there's the hole. I love a good hole in the middle of a desert. Who do you think dug it? I wonder if it started as a punishment. Ah, the beautiful suffering of pointless manual labor. Want me to dig a bottomless hole for you, Miss Weaving? I could use the exercise anyway. You dig a bottomless hole? Just for me? Why, that's the nicest... Hello! Hi, Coach! Hi, Camp Director, Ms. Weavy! You do seem like you're having fun talking privately, so I wanted to butt in and have fun, too. <laughs> what Scott means to say is that we're tour guides. Yeah, let's go with that. We're here to tell you fun facts about the hole. <laughs> fun fact, holes play a big role in the three pillars of modern society. Straws, Grave digging and the donut industry. Hey. Fun fact, I love digging holes. It's my favorite hobby. I know, Mr. Howe. We passed some of the holes you dug on the way here. It's a wonder we found the true landmark at all. Well, Cheekly, Polly and Scott loaded the bases. Now you're up to bat. Give us a real hole in one fun hole fact. It's so deep you can most likely fit like 30 pies in it. <laughs> <laughs> argued the mysterious origins of the hole. But in reality, it was a very weird marketing stunt pulled by a pizza place in the 80s. Listen carefully. The hole will whisper your darkest desires to you. Don't get confused if the hole sounds a lot like me. Sheer coincidence. We gotta go for the 80s. Let's go for the 80s. <laughs> I have trouble believing that. Digging a hole in the middle of it doesn't seem like a terrible marketing ploy. Oh. oh yeah. It was definitely a bad move. Cheapskate Cam's Pizza did a lot of terrible marketing stunts before they finally shut down. They tried the hole. They did a sweepstakes where the winner got to name the CEO's firstborn child. They tried declaring oysters as a new cool side for pizza. Fascinating stuff, kids. How come I've never heard of Cheapskate Cam's Pizza before? <sighs> Are you really surprised? This was the company that thought digging a bottomless hole in the middle of the desert was better than just making a commercial. Honestly, it was the 80s. Chances are these marketing stunts were fueled by ludicrous amounts of coke. Well, Ms. Geist, I assume your story has many holes in it. But I lived the 80s, and I saw several coked-up marketing stunts for overpriced fast food in my day, so the jury is still out. In any case, this is what happens when young folks stop cooking their meals at home. Aw, I didn't know you liked home-cooked meals. 
Can I make you my famous lamb heart muscle milk vitamin A smoothie sometime? It's great for your hamstrings. Why, yes. That's thoughtful of you, Coach. I actually love consuming my f food pureed. Prank achieved. You get plus three hype out of it, but you lose minus three soul for deceiving people. Boo. <laughs> Let's take this slow. World's biggest potato. <laughs> <laughs> you, you say potato, I say potato! <laughs> Border of a one-person country. <laughs> <laughs> These are fucking great. Mind. <laughs> uh... Bye, hole! I wish I could have gone inside you! Whoa, you had no idea there was another country out here in the middle of the desert. Of course, geography was never your strong suit. Or maybe this civilization is new. What the fuck? <laughs> Whatever the case, you're hella curious to check out this place. What do you do when you cross the border? Learn the country's customs. Smuggle something out. International relations. Uh, yeah, we can afford to lose a little mind. Yeah. This country is little more than a cottage in a small field. You walk through the open door and see several important looking people sitting around a table. Okay, settle down, everyone. I officially call the annual Monster United Nations meeting to order. I'm Ball Barith, here today in representation of hell. I'm Ambassador Fish Owner, representing the Murray Kingdom. Our nation is happy to test the peaceful political discourse thing before jumping straight to global invasions. And I'm Noodles, representing my country, Noodles Europe. <laughs> <laughs> is there a specific reason as to why we recognize Noodles sovereign nation as a legitimate country? It's a long story. The short version is we don't want a repeat of what happened last time. We tried to kick him out of the MUN. <laughs> the rest of the ambassadors introduce themselves. The ambassadors of Belgium, Singapore, Madagascar, and Christmas Island are all present. Great. I think that's everyone, so let's begin. Oh, wait a minute, says the Singaporean ambassador. Where are all these people sitting off to the side? I'm here! Hey, bros, don't mind us, we just want to listen in. You can't do that, cries the Belgian ambassador. This is a classified meeting amongst some of the world's respected, most respected, dangerous leaders in the monster world. Huh. Yet you let noodles in? You have no idea what war crimes I'm capable of. <laughs> for life. Okay, fine. Then we're actually ambassadors of a new country called the Independent Republic of Pranks. Yeah, let's go with that. Sounds made up. But all countries are made up, I suppose. You can stay, but according to diplomatic laws, you can only participate in one point of discussion. It's helpies, new countries, and international politics. You check the itinerary for today's meeting. Which point of discussion do you choose? International trade treaties, diplomatic negotiations aiming to stop Noodles Europe from building nuclear weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Concern. <laughs> Yeah, stopping noodles from building weapons of mass destruction sounds like the sensible choice here. You wait until they get to that point of discussion. When you join in, some of the action has started already. Fuck off. You can't make me stop my nuclear weapons. Stop making my nuclear weapons. No way, no how. Maybe it's too late. Maybe I've already built the nuclear weapons, and I have them stored here, inside this card box. He's bluffing! Not even Ambassador Noodles would be reckless enough to put nuclear weapons in a cardboard box. You think so? Are you sure that you're willing to let me drop it? <laughs> <laughs> no! Don't do that! <laughs> Noodles, if you have nukes in there, you have to show us. International negotiations rule entitled us to at least a five-second peak of all nuclear bombs. Ugh, fine. Psych! I got you. <laughs> you should have seen the looks on your faces. I think we can reach a compromise. 
Ambassador Noodles, if you let Ambassador Fish Odor have the box, Scott will do a silly dance for you. Trust me, it's very silly. You won't want to miss it. Well, it's really that silly. But okay. Woo! Silly dancey time! Do 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 that dance was great. Totally worth it. You guys can look in the box now. Fucking hell! He really did have nukes in here. Told you. Tee We did it! Hooray! We stopped the nuclear dance. We stopped a nuclear apocalypse. Silly dance time! Do 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 on a somewhat related note, I was uh, I was working at the time, so I just had it on, you know, audio only, and uh, I couldn't really be present in the chat, but I was there for a good chunk of the Minecraft stream yesterday. Some of those gnome stories had me fucking dying. <laughs> <laughs> just hiding in the bushes, tee hee. <laughs> tee hee. Oh god, I think I just fucked myself on my have two stats. Oh cats nope. can't normally still die, might be able to pull it off. I am no normal cat. Let's see what we got. Secluded, Secluded village. village. Attack on Titan. Jesus or Christ. Probably just a mirage. Oh, we gotta go there. Alright. <coughs> I can't believe we went to Europe! I'm so well traveled now! Whoa, what sort of place is this? Is it even real? This looks weird. A location this nonsensical could easily just be the product of a dehydrated, overheated brain. But half of the weird shit you do and see on the daily could fall into that category too. So who's to say? One thing's for sure, you're going to explore this strange place. Where do you go? The wise talking bush. The Oasis of a Thousand Scots, or Mirage Town. <laughs> the Oasis of a Thousand Scots, the wise talking bush. You and your friends check out the Mirage. It's full of gorgeous oases, flying pigs, unproblematic tweeter feeds, and other things that will never exist. <laughs> Polly, Polly, listen. Check it out, Polly. There's a bush making noises near an iridescent camel with 16 humps. Hi, kids. It's Councillor Flood. I mean, Councillor Floral Talking Bush. Ah. <laughs> oh, neat. A wise talking magical bush. I was wondering when we'd run into one of these. Um, hmm. Are you sure it's not just Councillor Flodge disguised as a bush? Nah, I don't think this is Flodge. It wouldn't make sense for him to be out here anyway. Blame. Like, why would Flodge wear a bush disguise and sit in the middle of the desert for no reason? That'd be incredibly sad and lame. Hey! If I was Fludge, which I'm not, it wouldn't be sad or lame of me, I, I mean of him, to dress up as a bush alone in the middle of the desert. It would be an admirable commitment to the noble art of camouflage. Committing to the things you love isn't sad or lame, it's brave and cool. <laughs> well, it is Rise. You're right, Polly, this is an all-knowing talking bush. Of course I am. If you want... <laughs> I could use my wise magic bush powers to answer your questions about the secrets of the universe. <laughs> I, let me that just say, I awesome. always love your old Jewish grandfather voice. <laughs> A little kugel maybe you have? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. Guys, we have one chance to ask a super smart question. We gotta make it count. Uh, I never said anything about there being a limit on the questions. <laughs> nope, you only get one. Them's the fucking rules. Cheekley, what should we ask Counselor Floral Talking Bush? <laughs> Uses opportunity to solve Monster's biggest unsolved mystery, how planes work. <laughs> <laughs> the mysteries of aeronautics. Yes. Yes, good idea. I've always wanted to know the answer to this deeply kept secret. Well, that's not much of a secret, actually. It's just... Hey. My theory has always been they pull the plane back on the in a ginormous slingshot and let it fly that way. Ooh, good theory. It's not like we can see the plane taking off of the, on the tarmac, so we wouldn't be able to see the slingshot. Actually, kids' planes fly with... My theory is that they have to make periodic sacrifices to the plane gods throughout the flight to stay airborne. Plot twist! Why do you think you never see the same flight attendant twice? 
Oh. Wow, good point. I always assumed they stuffed the engine with birds that fly the plane for them. That's a good one. You know, I saw this documentary once where they get a whole bee colony to hold the plane and... That wasn't the documentary! <laughs> now look what you've done. Your inability to pay attention was so vexing I couldn't disguise my frustration anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up. Planes actually fly based on lift, drag, gravity, and thrust. If you turn your physics textbooks to the diagram on page 105... Oh. Wait, there's homework involved in this explanation? Ew. Can't we just say it's birds in the engine and call it a day? No! You ask! <laughs> if I can't dazzle you with the beautiful art of camouflage, I'm at least going to teach you aero science. Great. At least you gain plus three mind from Flodge's lecture. But you definitely lose minus three hype, learning aero science in the boiling desert heat. <laughs> So many choices. Ugh, I need my 14 hours of sleep. Let's see. Let's go to the info thing. See if I can't go ahead and manipulate some destinations. There. Oh yeah, there's a thing. Welcome to Noodles. There's a thing in Prank Masters mode. Uh, you might have seen when I hovered over. Uh, it said like bid. Mm -hmm. You can use your prank dollars to uh, outbid someone if you want to like snipe. Uh, rest stop destination from them like if there's a like if there's an npc you're both trying to date you can be like no i have more money than you so i'm kicking you out <laughs> even though the person with the lowest money gets the uh gets a loser ending which overrides the date ending so it's kind of a <laughs> it's kind of a balancing act but welcome to noodle swap shop where friends get a discount and cops pay bills but you're neither of those things, so let's settle for regular price, yeah? Magic. Money. Uh, we need money. Shit. I don't know if any of those things are money. We can stand to lose hype. Let's see. Evil deity wrapped, trapped in a snow globe. Heaven and all I got was this dumb t-shirt. The, the truth. truth. <laughs> Marble's guac and a penguin mask. <laughs> you might think that would be a stamina one. You'd be wrong. That is a Monster Prom 1 reference to a very kinky sex act. <laughs> the reverse Romanian Wilkinson. <laughs> Uh, shit. We will all die eventually. Thanks for stopping by. Tell your sleep paralysis demons I said hi. Nighttime. All right. You go to the shady property, the used car dealership, or the biker bar. Let's see. We will need money so let's go for one that gives us money oh, all of these have money. a money option which is convenient <laughs> oh it's, it's kind of a shady property i want to flip that on somebody all right are we there yet i'm tired I oh wow we did end up with wow two is the same hot hot yeah, damn time. last second God damn it. <laughs> You're still out of me. <laughs> it's my turn again. I didn't get the rest. Uh, eight. Did you ever seen a hat drive? Mine trinket. Smooching monsters. Um, sure. Oh yeah, no. Uh, yeah, 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 no. Uh, yeah, no. Virtus, a uh, fucking Spaz has a great fucking. <laughs> has a great fucking <laughs> Jewish grandfather. <laughs> oh, it's money time, bitch. 
<laughs> All the only options are money at the wealthy mansion. I love it. Let's go. <laughs> the factory workers assemble. <laughs> How much money do these people have? Like a hundred bucks at least. Wow, this is one fancy house. These people must be rich, rich. There's a sort of unsettling vibe to this place. But that's probably just what being rich feels like. Found a place to lay my head. <laughs> Now's your chance to barge in and see what billionaire living is like for yourself. What interests you most? Family games. Family. Grandpa's <laughs> fun experiments. Babysitting the children. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry in advance. <laughs> You and your friends ring the manor doorbell, and a wealthy woman dressed in furs answers. Exclusively furs. She's just. She, yes. She's she's just a. It's just a lion. Oh, this woman in a fur coat. I walked up to her. I said, "Excuse me, what kind of fur is that?" She said, "Raccoon." I said, "My God, it must have been huge." <laughs> <laughs> she was wearing unscented perfume. Came in a little empty bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. She says. Are you here to look after Grandpa? Huh? Oh, uh, we're not trained to care for old people, really. I don't care. He's driving me nuts. I'll give you plus three money to look after him. Follow me! <laughs> to adventure! Uh, <laughs> okay. You're taken into a dark, shadowy basement where you find an old man using a circular saw. <laughs> I think Grandpa's gotta be you. <laughs> Oh, visitors, come in, come in, it's so nice to see you, it's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Gramps. You sure have a lot of old Splash Kaboom games lying around down here. <laughs> oh, I have much more than just the game. I'm the biggest Splash Kaboom fan in the world. Let me show you some of my work. Let me show you my grim task. <laughs> This is Crimson Darkheart, my original Splash Kaboom character. He's Splash's best friend and oozes class, sass, and radical charm. You know why Sonic eats chili dogs? Why? Because they give him the runs. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I see. This design is certainly uh, creative. Yes, isn't Crimson amazing? He's just the sort of guy you'd like to know in real life, don't you think? <laughs> Maybe someday. <laughs> <laughs> This is Crimson's loyal steed, Excelsior of the Ghost Wolf. He has two asses. <laughs> All the best OCs have my OCs attached to them to build lore. Huh. This is actually a weird looking horse. <laughs> it is. You know, you kids are remarkably excelsior. Almost as if you're two halves of his whole body. As if God put you in my lab <laughs> so that I may stitch you together and make my incredible steed a reality. Uh. Pump the brakes, Gramps. Loving your OC is one thing, but doing amateur surgery to bring your OC to life is a step too far. Is it? <laughs> is it? <laughs> They called me mad! Barge me from the universities! <laughs> Don't worry, it'll all be over soon. Stay here, I'm going to get my forceps! Decide amongst Molly, yourself I which head will dispense for duty! <laughs> Psst, Polly, it's just me who's starting to get weird. No shit, it's getting weird. Grandpa wants us to stitch us together into a cursed OC chimera. I love you guys, but I'm not spending the rest of my own life sewn to Scott's butt. We need to escape. We'll need a distraction. Well, Grandpa to explain in great detail the good old days of Splash's early seasons. Your best to teach him how to use the internet. That's where Splash lives. Oh! That should work. Hey, Grandpa, do you want to meet Splash for real? Are you kidding? That would be my dream! Do you know where he is? <laughs> he lives in the magical digital world we call the Internet. Have you heard of it? Oh, that place where young folk go to invent new genders? That's a bit beyond me. 
not anymore. Brian here is terminally online. He'll show you the ropes. Brian, help Gramps set up an AO4 account. So pass the most frustrating 20 minutes of your life as you try to explain to Grandpa how to open his browser window. You want me to open the window? Is it so Splash can enter through the window? No, I mean the window on his computer. You just need to click on the browser icon. Click? What is click? Splash doesn't make clicking sounds. His voice is radical and devil maker. Okay, that's enough distractions. One more second of this and I'm going to lose my minus three mind. Scott, now! Scott hits Grandpa across the head with a chair, knocking him unconscious. You all run for the exit. Bros? Wait, bros, this isn't the way out. This is a dungeon or something. From the shadowy corner of the dungeon, a bleeding, shambling, stitched together creature trudges towards you. Help me. <laughs> Ah! What the Kentucky front fuck is that? You guys gotta go fast. <laughs> the exit's up the stairs. Hurry before you end up like me with diseases <laughs> of the mind. Never have you ever fled a room so fast. Time to repress this whole traumatic experience for your own sanity. Yay, road trip. Cats can't normally drive, but I am no normal cat. Property! Right. Property! Property! All right. We have two money options. Shady property or the caves. <laughs> Shady property. Man, it'd be great if something random happened right now. As you're driving, you pass a familiar computer boy walking around with a strange device in his hands. Hello! <laughs> hey, Jackie Lester, what you got there? Some kind of high-tech football? Hello, friend Scott. It is actually a device I invented to detect weak spots in the edges of our dimension, where we might be able to cross into others. Friend Joy has alluded to me that there are other pocket dimensions clinging to the edges of our own, places which defy all science and logic. These realms are surely impossible, but if I found one, think of the strange plants that will likely grow there. I could study them. <laughs> and today's your lucky day, Cal. We're following this map to the magical pocket dimension right now. Error. Holy shit, what? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to come with us, bro? You can do your science while we go on an adventure. If you have a map to the dimension, I would be foolish not to accept your offer. But I must ask. Will this be a safe adventure? Uh, sure, totally. <laughs> we got Chiclay in charge of safety, and he knows all the safety rules of interdimensional travel, don't you, Boo? You absolutely do not, but you'd better put Cal at ease by pretending you do. <laughs> you decide to tell him, aka Makeup, the number one rule of interdimensional travel, which is... <laughs> The first one. They said Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? I knew Shrek was one of the greatest films ever made. <laughs> Isn't that big of an interdimensional deal? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shrek plays a surprisingly large role in the course of history and societal norms. For example, did you know that our timeline wasn't even meant to have a Shrek franchise? What? No way! I can't imagine life without Shrek. And yet, such a life was almost our destiny, until an interdimensional traveler brought a DVD copy of Shrek 2 into our realm. This threw the monster realm into a frenzy, and diehard Shrek fans worked tirelessly to reverse engineer what the original Shrek must have been about. At first, it was a beautiful collective effort to capture the magic of the original film. But the taste of success was addictive. The Shrek internet hive mind became drunk with power and continued making Shrek sequels ad nauseum. <laughs> to date, there are over 60 films in the Shrek cinematic universe with no signs of stopping. Some theorize that there is a limit to how many iterations of Shrek can exist in a liminal space. Meaning that with every mediocre Shrek sequel we create, we bring our world one step closer to total entropy and chaos. Huh? Shit. 
How do you know so much about this, Calculaster? I am inextricably connected to the internet at all times. I know more about Shrek than I ever wanted to know. <laughs> you lose minus three hype, knowing you must withhold your passion for Shrek on this adventure. But at least you gained plus three mind, learning that deep Shrek lore. <laughs> this place seems like exactly the sort of place you shouldn't visit. What can go wrong? Which, naturally, is exactly why you have to visit it. <laughs> Poor movie logic for the win. <coughs> the big question now is how you'd like to enter the premises. What's it going to be? Check the backyard first. That's, 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 that's my way <laughs> yes. of doing it. Yes. Just knock on the door, goddammit. <laughs> you sneak into the backyard to find a masked man talking with two cops. Good evening, Jerry. We got a call last night. Something about a woman screaming and begging for mercy, followed by chainsaw noises in your house. Oh, just my wife and I having our special time. You know how it is. I hear that. Happy wife. Happy life. No, <clears throat> no wait. Hang on. I gotta. I, I think I'm in this guy's head now. I mean, <laughs> let me do another take. Okay, okay. I hear that. Happy wife. Happy life. Happy life. <laughs> now I'm sure this is nothing but we got another call an hour later that you were digging a hole and rolling a person shaped bundle into it oh I was just regarded yeah I was my best plan at 2am everything does require digging holes I think we can safely say this all checks out yep this all seems to be in order sorry to take up so much of your time Jerry my partner and I will be going. Ah! Scream the cops as they suddenly plummet into the ground. <laughs> I don't know. Silly us. Calling into this sudden six foot bubble. Thank goodness all our fall was broken by this off corpse. Wait a second. <laughs> Jerry, buddy. Care to explain why you have a corpse in a hole in your backyard? Oh, well, that's because. Um... Actually, I need a second just to talk to my lawyers. Hang on a second. Psst. Hey, you, trespassers. Congrats. You guys are my lawyers now. I'll pay if you can get me out of being arrested. Oh, I got it. Wow, I'm a lawyer. My grandma's going to be so proud. <laughs> Don't worry, Jer. I've got a plan. We'll ask Chicle to come up with a plan. We are going to make the corpse disappear. Ooh. <laughs> Alakablam! Great plan. <laughs> Great idea, Chigley. You be the magician. I'll back you up. <laughs> come one, come all to the debut performance of Chigley the Illusionist. Cops get in free. Really? Military veterans and teachers get all the fun discount. Finally, a win for credit. You dazzle the cops with some warm-up tricks. Quarter behind the ear, card tricks, mildly invasive hypnosis. Now I need a volunteer from the audience. Does anyone here have a corpse I can use? Hey, what look? We got a corpse right here. You put the corpse in your magic box, do a little jig, and say the magic words. Minus three magic later, you open the box to show that the corpse has disappeared. <laughs> that was amazing. Bravo, bravo. Yeah, nice trick. But, uh, where's the corpse? We kind of need it to convict the serial killer. Not cool! <laughs> Shame on you! You should never ask a magician to reveal his secrets. Seriously, partner. That's a magician who rules 101. Where are your manners? Damn it! This is the third time this week we've lost crucial evidence this way. The sheriff's gonna strip my wings for sure. Real relax, it'll be fine. Why don't we come out of a nice, quiet city block and give random people party tickets? You know, that does sound nice. Thanks, partner. You always know how to cheer me up. <laughs> nice work, Chicle. Here's your plus three money. When the time comes, I promise I'll kill you last. Are we there yet? I'm tired. Huzzah. National Park? Go hug a tree, nature nerd. <laughs> Fancy hotel. 
Let's see. Well, this missing. tar's missing is a good woofer. I can help! Woof woof! <laughs> Where do you stay when you're too cheap for a real hotel, but too fussy for a regular motel? Here, apparently. Ooh, la, la. This place is full of class, charm, and poise. Three things you've always lacked. Which means tonight is the perfect night to cosplay as a rich, fancy person. What do you do? Frank, call the front desk, visit the bar, explore the amenities. The amenities. Always a fun word. Wait, did that baby's wings also have eyes? Yeah, he's a biblically accurate angel. Yeah, he's one of the, he's one of them that are biblically <laughs> accurate ones. <laughs> Scott is sleeping and Polly's busy reorganizing her nudes, so you head to the bar to do some classic drinking alone. Before you can order, though, the bartender brings you a drink you didn't ask for. The guy <laughs> sitting at table three ordered this for you. <laughs> he said to tell you that my wife really digs your vibe. Do with that when you will. You check out the couple. They're a couple of hot silver foxes. You drink your drink and get up to say hi when another drink is delivered to you. Hey again. This one's from the warlock at table two. Ah, it's dimes. <laughs> he says... Your eyes hold the magical secrets to the universe. Pickup lines just get weirder and weirder these days. You check out the warlock while you drink his drink. His shadowy eyes are mind-bending and a bit crazed, but that only seems to draw you in more. It's a tough choice between him and the swingers, but... All right, Mr. Popular. This one's from the gang of mercenaries at table seven. I was uh, too scared to ask if they, have, if they had a message for you. Oh, you got the message, all right. The mercenaries are arm teeth with lots of scars and rippling muscles. Mark you down as scared and horny. <laughs> You'd happily try your luck with everyone if you could. The spirit is willing, but alas, the flesh is weak and kind of tipsy after three drinks. You decide to sit with... You know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> the couple is very happy you've decided to sit with them. They both start playing footsie with you under the table. I simply adore your outfit, says the woman. It screams, I want a strange couple to proposition me for a night of carnal pleasure. Thanks. That's exactly what I requested from the seamstress. <laughs> this is sort of our hobby, explains the man. We're exceedingly wealthy and have several mansions we could be, be vacationing in. But occasionally we prefer to slum it at a fancy motel and find a third at the bar. We're also fond of yacht circle jerks and weird imported porn, the woman laughs. Where have these two been all your life? <laughs> so, stranger, are you interested in cavorting with us in a luscious, decadent bacchanal between three consenting socialites? What? Oh, sorry, I forgot you don't speak, Rich. I'm asking if you want to have sex with us. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> you have a wild night with these two. So wild that you lose three stamina and gain three hype. Now turn. What we got? Roadside wig museum or rodeo. <laughs> oh shit. Um <laughs> both of these sound stupid. Let's go to rodeo. Oh, can you take my head out of the car? Scott, this is a convertible. Your head is always out of the car. Whoa! <laughs> rodeos are an exciting celebration of all the best parts of cowboy culture. Not my first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, sexy cowboy. <sighs> keep it together, keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> Horseback riding, calf tying, steer wrestling, and eating obscene amounts of pulled pork. God, I love pulled pork. Yep. There are lots of events and exhibitions happening today. Which do you want to see? Rodeo clowns, lasso tricks, or bucking bulls? Let's check out. Oh, we gotta go to we gotta go to the bulls. Bulls are always a fun time. Especially this bull. Mm -hmm. You approach the rodeo announcers and say you want to try riding a bull. Okay, they say. You want a mechanical bull or an actual bull? Yeah. Real bull. Do whatever's the most dangerous and the least sensible. Unsensibly dangerous. Coming right up. Chicle, come to the stage. Your friends can watch from the stands. Welcome to the rodeo, everybody. Today we've got only the roughest, toughest, sweatiest bulls and bull riders. Starting with Chicle. Go team! 
Go, Jake Lee! Go for the win! Hey, how do you win at this sport? Survive. <laughs> Usually winner is declared when the bull is exhausted or when the rider needs emergency spinal surgery. Whichever comes first. Now, y'all know our rodeo is a bit different. We don't like exhausting poor animals just for our enjoyment. We like a bull man who can consent to entertain you fine folks. So give it up for the king of shattering the dreams and pelvises of bull riders everywhere, Morty the Minotaur! What's up, Chiefly? Ready to ride this bear back into oblivion? Yes. <laughs> I see that look in your eyes. You don't know if you should be terrified or aroused. I call it going horny with fear. <laughs> you should be horny afraid. You can't see, but I'm doing the poses. <laughs> It'll be a real challenge to ride me. It's hard, it's rough, and it takes more fortitude than a Spartan in battle. And that's just the foreplay. <laughs> you got this, Chiclay. Just establish a safe word, like, ah, get me off this fucking bull. You absolutely do not got this, but you can't back down now. You just need the right strategy to come out on top. E. How do you ride Morty? <laughs> Well, maybe it's too soon to ride Morty. We barely know each other. Maybe you can just get lunch and take it slow. Set the right mood with suggestive music and lighting, while also wearing appropriate rodeo leather. Then you'll be ready for a wild ride. Brew a performance-enhancing tantric potion so you and Morty can transcend flesh and ride for hours into a deeper journey you'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> From a technical sense, all chaps are assless. <laughs> POTIONS! POTIONS! You lose minus one magic, brewing the perfect tantric brew. You offer some to Morty. Interesting. I I've never tried bull riding while tripping, but I'm flexible to new experiences. I'm also just flexible in general. See what I did there? See? See? Do you see? <laughs> you see, all right. You see everything now that the psychedelics have kicked in. You and Morty are connected mind, body, and soul. You ride Morty to the edge of consciousness and back. You are unmade and remade. You ride him. You are ridden upon. I the am self made is destroyed. of stars! <laughs> yes. You two are no longer separate. You are Morty. You and Morty are a chimera of pure connection. Your souls are entwined. You two are the universe incarnate. That was the most stimulating ride I've ever had. Thanks for the trip. I'll be in my stable, rubbing a few out if you need me. And hey, Chiclay, Big Boss Coconuts, am I right? Yep, Big Boss Coconuts indeed. Mama like it. Chiclay, you broke the all-time bull riding record. And you did it while you were high off your ass. Mad respect. Thanks, Cactus. <laughs> Good job, bro. What does Big Boss Coconuts mean? This one's for you, King Gedera! <laughs> you say nothing, but just give a silent smirk. You and Scott may be friends, but after that trip, only you and Morty are Big Boss Coconuts level friends. Oh, fuck! Oh, we died! <laughs> <laughs> yep. You lost f four stamina riding Morty for what felt like eons, but your journey of self-discovery earned you plus two mind and plus one soul. Also, the crowd loved watching you and Morty run around tripping balls making you gain plus two hype. <laughs> Something's wrong. <laughs> you run out of food and starve. <laughs> and to think, you all agreed you had more than enough snacks for this trip. Now you'll have to eat your own words, which ironically would not save you from starving to death. <laughs> Sad. I STILL WON! <laughs> you were the least worst. I was the least worst at this. Oh yeah, there's six destinations and each have three different layers. Uh, just getting to it is the first, the basic one. Having a specific hitchhiker that you've succeeded a deep conversation with is mm. the second one. And then su succeeding at the, like, quest along the way is the third one. If you can pull all three off in a single run, you get, like, the version of that ending with all of the content in it. 
Oh, son of a bitch. That was a fun game. Yep. All For, right. Uh, here, just uh, real quick here. Let's see. Is it custom or settings? Uh, no, it's settings. For lack of an actual ending, I'm just going to play the... Uh, or, wait, I don't know if saying... Okay, never mind. Uh, View full credits doesn't actually play the credit sequence. It just lets you skip through it. Ah. You got uh, you got D and D this week or no? I got the den to de, so I gotta go ahead and get going. But this has been very fun. This has been a fun time. Yes, I uh, I fully propose we try to not die next week. <laughs> I didn't expect to die, but that was one of the ways I was probably gonna die anyway. <laughs> I always Running out of food I'd in the middle of the desert. Sex with a minotaur. <laughs> yeah. It's just like the old gypsy woman said. It's just like what she said. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and raid Connor. Your raid message is going to be, I rode a minotaur and died. <laughs> wink. Wink. Yeah, add a winky face. <laughs> I love you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Toodle pip. <laughs>